Hello, good there. Now I'm uh, set up for winding the gate drive transformers for uh, for my H bridge, and uh, this is the core I'm gonna use. The material is called T35, 10-ish millimeter, 9.5 I think, alter diameter. Um, it uh, these are actually out of production. It turns out uh, I did order them fairly recently, but. Uh, they are not recommended for new designs, but anyway, I have a bunch of them and I'm going to use them now for this project, but if I'm going to build it again later, I might actually have to find a replacement for this. And um, But I've been testing this transformer before, it works fine for what I'm going to use it for. Uh, I'm going to wind 18 turns of uh, 0.25mm copper wire, so like this on it. Um, the engineering work behind the size of this wire is that, okay, it was in my drawer and it was a way better fit than like the other two I have, which is 2mm and 1.6mm, so of course I wouldn't do this. Um, I would actually like to have the wire slightly thicker, but uh, but it, there is no problem with 0.25. That is what I used to wind the secondary coil of my Tesla coil. So I had a bunch of it left over. So I'm going to use that for the transformer. So the first thing I did was to uh, look at the data sheet and see that uh, the effective length or uh, circumference for each turn is uh, 20.72 millimeters. So I multiply that by 18 and get uh, 27, no, 37.3 centimeters. It's the length of wire I need to just barely uh, get the 18 turns. And then I'm gonna add uh, a few centimeters to that. So I guess 37, 47, yeah, about 50 centimeters is the wire I'm going to start with. So I'm going to cut, for each transformer, I'm going to cut two lengths of uh, 50 centimeters of this cable. And then I'm going to twist it together, and that will be the primary and secondary side of the transformer, which will then be fairly tightly coupled. It's a one to one transformer just to get isolation for the gate drivers. I don't really need also isolation on the on the um, low side of the H bridge, but it's convenient to have symmetrical drivers for top side and bottom side. And I guess it's also a plus that I actually get full insulation between the high power side and the control side. So I opted for using transformers, the same transformers for all four MOSFETs in the bridge. So let's measure out about 50 centimeters of this guy. That's 30. And another 20. So I have half a meter of this cable. Snip it, then I'm going to measure out another equally length, like so, just snip it too. Then one more just to have one for measuring the next. I'm not gonna make more than three for now. Of course, I'm gonna need to make two for each of the next three transformers as well. But let's get one of them finished first. So there you go. Now we have two of these guys. 
and now I'm gonna twist them together. I guess there's several ways to do that. I'll just make sure they're fairly straight first. Dragging along them, straightening out all the kinks. So and then I put them down here and now I'm gonna find my electric drill. I'm not sure if you can see that, just a regular power rail, battery powered. And what I'm gonna do now is to get those end to line up and I'm gonna lock that in here of course it, it won't grab it like it with the drill bit because they're too thin but when these three parts of the chuck goes together they they close fairly tight on the side here I'm not sure can you see that yeah it should be visible maybe I should do it on that side sorry <coughs> and Let's just bend this up, stick it in there, and close this up like that. Yeah, I know it's fairly secured, well secured there. Then I'm just gonna drag this out. I'm gonna hold the older end tight while I'm just spinning it to make a good twist. So, there we have a nicely twisted wire. It, uh, oh, that was the wrong way, that helps, yeah. So there we have this twisted pair that I'm not going to wind the transformer with. And one of these will be the primary and the other will be the secondary. Which is which doesn't really matter. So then I'm going to start with, yeah, I have these four cores, this over here, and I'm going to thread this guy through here, and just hold on to those ends, center it, tighten this up a bit, and then I'm going to wind one in each direction. So let's get this started there and then the first couple of rounds are a bit tricky because it doesn't there's nothing holding it in place but it gets much easier as when we got just a couple of turns on. So let's get this one turn. And oh come on my thumb, goes through there, tightening it up a bit, so there we go, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side, trying to keep it fairly tight, I'm gonna pack as much wire as I can in this without making it overlap, because I haven't seen any issues with the uh, leakage induction inductance in these transformers. Uh, that seems to be not an issue. Um, but saturation is an issue. So, I uh, have a visitor here. Tiny, tiny moth. Okay, tighten this up. Getting this in here. Do another turn on this side. So there you go. That was one, two, three, four turns. Then I'll just continue. I need to go nine turns in each direction. It's three turns on this side.
four turns. Five turns. So six turns. Seven. So almost done with the this end of it. Eight nine. So are they completely tight at the inner section there? Seems to be fine. Then flip it over. There was already two here. So this is the third. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. That right, it seems to be space for a bit more here. Hmm, curious. Should I add more? Did I miscount it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Hmm. Yeah, there is actually space. Maybe there, because the twisting made them kind of stand on top of each other a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to put another turn in here, because I want, want as low saturation frequency as possible. And since I don't think it will be an issue with the uh, leakage induction ductions. Still, there is actually space for two more, so I'm gonna do one more on each side here. So then I actually have 20, 20 turns on this one. So let's see how that works out. There you go. And now we need to secure this with some glue. I'm just gonna use some CA super glue. And when I find the kicker activator, because I'm not gonna wait. This this uh, like CA glue is really awesome. It uh, uh, it dries really quickly if you push the parts together so that the oxygen is removed. But if you just drop it on, like I'm gonna do here, it it takes forever, like hours, to to actually dry. So, but when I hit it with this uh, accelerator or kicker, it will harden almost instantly. So now I'm gonna put a drop of that inside here. Make sure both sides are properly soaked with glue, and just hit it with this guy. So now it should stick. 
there you go and now I have to untangle this and figure out which is what on the primary and secondary and of course make sure the polarity is correct so I don't invert the signal because that would be really bad so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna untangle this and uh, scrape off some of the enamel on the end of this wire so I can actually check for connect, uh, continuity so I can check which is what on each side of the transformer and uh, then I'm actually just gonna leave these wires because I'm gonna try to just these are supposed to be solderable without removing the enamel first and I have actually before heated them with a lighter to make sure that they are uh, to, to try to remove the lacquer that is on them but the, that leaves a nasty residues from the lacquer that makes it actually harder to solder so I think it's easier to just heat them up and solder through the lacquer which according to the datasheet is what you're supposed to do anyway so not sure why I haven't tried that before but this time at least I'm gonna try it so let's get this thing entangled too yeah I, I was a bit generous with the amount of wire here as you can see I ended up with a ton of extra wire at each end but yeah there you go now, and of course the glue wicked down a little bit on one side there but there you go so that's the four wires. Let's cap this guy again. And now I'm gonna um, scrape off the ends. Let me get the knife. Just yeah, I can see copper there and there. And on there, and then finally on there. And then I need something that beeps. Uh, let's see, let's grab just some multimeter here and put it on beep mode. See, does it beep? Oh, yeah. It's a super crappy multimeter, but for this it should work. Let's see. Are these two? Yeah, which side did I actually scrape? That seems to be the wrong one. Then let's try this. Yeah. Oh, come on. Of course, I only scraped one side of this, so getting actual connection is with. Oh, yeah. So these two are from one side, so that was a bit annoying because they are actually coming out the opposite side here after I glued it. But then we're just gonna twist this over like this. So yeah, then we know that these two is one side of the transformer and these two is the other. So now I can just try this through the PCB, cut them at the bottom, and solder it in. So I'm gonna do that as soon as I made three more of these. So, but for now I'm just gonna turn off the camera and uh, make the rest of them. <laughs> 